Welcome everyone to the HWBot World Series 2016. This would be the HWBot World Series for amateur. The amateur have uh, trained earlier this week in the next in the past four days to uh, discover the uh, Broadwell eCPU from Intel, the Intel Core i7 6950X. This is the most powerful powerful CPU on the market today and uh, they you know, they get trained for 30 minutes and then they add 30 minutes to try out the different settings uh, dial and knobs for, for it they will be using XTU the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility this is a benchmark that is completely integrated with HWBot uh, of course they can also change some of the setting directly inside the, the, the software and they will have uh, about 2 times 15 minutes to set the best score to make things completely fair for everyone they will have one system for 15 minutes then they will exchange the system and they will start again to do the try to do the best score the total the final ranking is based on the amount of the two scores they will uh, be producing thank you guys for being here with us on the twitch.tv channel on the computex team or and directly on the intel twitch.tv channel and we this is our overclocking we used to see extreme overclocking just before and now we're seeing regular overclocking this is exactly the kind of overclocking that you guys can do at home with this system we are using uh, x99 motherboard we are using uh, zadak 511 memory stick ddr4 uh, as you can see it's all rgb we are using the ssds from zadak 511 as well uh, the coding solution is provided by thermaltech but it's a 360 L in one coolers. The PSU are the Seasonic Platinum 760 watt power supply. You can see on the stage now the uh, organizer of the event, uh, Xiala, with the Keep Pushing It t shirt. One of the t shirts you can get on the Twitch store just below the Twitch uh, player on overclocking.tv. And uh, you have also to say one of the local uh, helper for this event. This event has been relying a lot on these guys. These guys are part of this. You know, to make this event happen, you need to have these kind of guys uh, to to help out and, and make sure that everything works fine. Uh, as you can see, the system have been mounted on the special Stricom BC1 bench table. This is the open bench table project. And if you want to know more about that special system and uh, so, in the open case, you can go to openbenchtable.com and send your information in. I got the information that we will be able to soon start the uh, the commentary on this. There will not be any draw for the benchmark because the benchmark is already decided. They will be using Intel XTU, the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. All right. So we have a two local guy here today. These people uh, will be benching for 15 minutes and then they will be exchanging seats to the other one. The total score will count so we add up the two score. I'm being joined here today for the commentary with Lee Gouft, Albert, our overclocking expert from Belgium. How are you doing my friend? Uh, pretty good. Uh, so we saw a solid match with the extreme guys. Looking forward to see what the amateurs can pull off. But benching for a live crowd, maybe their first time. I don't know. We'll see. That's the first time they do actually experience Broadwell E uh, here. That's the first time they experience overclocking at this level and that's the first time they end up on stage for an overclocking competition yeah maybe they have like gamed uh, online maybe even eh, on, on lan events but now this is something totally different something let's say out of the comfort zone <laughs> can we call it like that so yeah pretty cool i don't know if you can pronounce the names of the people do they have like a nickname or something set up improvement so the name that the, the guys we're going to see today are Lant Z Ian and DS934118. So we just call them Lan and DS, right? Yes. Okay, that, yeah. that will be cool. We are just a few minutes away from this first match here. This is the semi final of the AOC, the Amateur Overclocking Competition. Uh, they are competing in the HWBot World Series for Amateur. This is the special competition specifically made for new people. I don't this. know, somebody, somebody's like making this weird, weird gestures. I don't know what's wrong with them at this moment. So we have to have like a. 
a guy let's do translation all the time. So, uh, do you know anything about about our HW bot staff from Asia, Truthman? Sure, that's uh, Tsei Ray. Uh, this guy is a volunteer that came to help us here out for the for the event. He did an awesome work. He was here at the beginning when we did set up the booth. He was here every day helping out, and he's here today helping out for the final. Uh, I would like to give a big round of applause to Tsei on the scene. The, he was on the scene just earlier. Big round of applause for Tsei. Good job, man. Very good job here. Then we have the information that uh, we are ready to go in this match. We are just waiting for the judge to uh, no, give the beginning of this match. Good to go. Just going to have to wait for uh, Christian and the judge to launch the match. They will both be overclocking on XTU, the Extreme Tuning Utility. This is the benchmark uh, co-developed by Intel and HWBot. And it is like a, a simplified version of, of the stress testing of V5. Because we're into overclocking, everybody has to check their stability. Uh, how can you verify if it's stable enough to overclock you set? And yeah, Intel developed like this really high load benching, bench marking or stress testing tool, as you can call it. It's some, let's say, similar loops of Prime 95. Maybe that rings a bell to some people on the Twitch channel. And they really integrated it and included the AVX instruction. So it's really pushing your setup pretty, pretty damn hard, in fact. Um, we could say if this is stable, your system should also be stable enough for gaming, okay. let's say, processor wise. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good luck. So they're off, they're doing like twice 15 minutes. So this is the, the difference from the extreme guys, which did like 30 minutes in a row. And these guys are doing twice 15 minutes. Why? Because we have two setups and it could be that one setup is maybe clocking a little bit higher than the other ones. So they get like a fair game. So after 15 minutes, they switch setups. So each opponent, let's say each competitor has the same chance of clocking the CPU as high as the other one. It's all about the tweaking, how they did it, how they achieved the score. And uh, we have to say, these guys didn't know that much about overclocking in the beginning. And they got like a 30 minute tutorial, didn't they, Truthman? From the Indeed. Cool Alert guys, There's I think, yeah. So during the week, uh, all the guys at Cool Alert were um, giving away information and, and explaining to people how to use and overclock these uh, Broadwell eCPUs. And that lasts for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, they can do, you no know, try by themselves. Yeah, indeed, and, and it's like uh, they've been taught really well, and they're like already like acquainted what what these CPUs can do. And it's like we said before during the extreme, on air or water cooling, because these guys are working on an all in a one thermal take extreme 360 rad at, it, at this moment. So it's pretty cooling the CPUs around 80 degrees under full load. So yes, that's not that bad. 2835. So for DS, so the first score is in. Not a bad score, in fact. For these clocks, 28.35 through our first score. Let's see. 28.22. 28.22, so we're like really close. Close game, that's the thing that we like to see. And maybe a blue screen once in a while could like liven up this uh, this amateur competition. It's really fun to see these guys like pushing these, these let's say, really, really, really expensive setups like already straight from the beginning up to 4,400 megahertz. We had our first crash for LAN. We might be pushing the setup a little bit too high. Has to wait for it to reboot, get into operating system again, and launch the XTU benchmark. Difference also with the extreme overclockers is they are not allowed to go into the BIOS. So they are only allowed to do the tweaking from inside the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. But you have access to, let's say, the basic values. All you need to do, like standard overclocking. So LAN at the moment working on the MSI platform and DS working on the ASUS platform. And again, as, as each year people are, are asking like, do you have like a hardware failures? And again, I think we have like an entire week they were stressing these, these setups and yeah, all the setups are still alive. So 12 setups like being stressed from nine o'clock in the morning till six in the evening and no hardware failure. So really awesome. You have to imagine, guys, if you've never done overclocking, you can see, in fact, how easy it is. Okay, you raise the V-Core to a safe value and, and all the manufacturers and even Intel said like max 1.4 V-Core. 
and then you just find up you just raise the multiplier so the cpu ratio in fact and just go slowly up and, and see where you top out so yeah kateron she said i mean i just learned to set my xmp profile yesterday so i should sign up and that's something what some people forget you buy like this high-end memory kit maybe and, and just run it at the intel defaults which are usually like lower spec than the things that you buy like high-end gear that you buy in, in a shop so did you must enable the xmp profile in the bias so the motherboard really detects well the correct memory speed and the timings that are given by the company so these land. guys here on stage are using Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. That's the system, the, the benchmark that everything is. There's the benchmark, there's the, the tweaking in there. Uh, that's a, that's going to be interesting to see because the score will be super tight. They use the same system that they will have to use their open end system right after. So the score we know will be tight. Uh, every little settings will be uh, important here. Yeah, and it's like we said, it's all about the tweaking and, and getting it done, getting it properly dialed in. And, and they know that the CPUs will top around 4,000, 4,500-ish 4, mark. That's normally the max you can get, like, stable for this benchmark on, on, on water cooling that they're on right now. We also, have, of course, have to think, like, temperature-wise. So the ambient temperatures are, I don't know, what would it be here, 24, 25-ish inside so that's maybe also a little bit more than in your living room depending on where you live and maybe maybe you guys can shout out on twitch on where you guys are from and, and what time it is at, at your current location but you can see that the hardware they're using today is full of rgb lights uh, rgb lights everywhere i love the rgbs uh, you can see that the ram have rgb the motherboard have rgb the ssds are rgb everyone love the leds everyone love rgb this is uh, this was the highlight of this Computex here. Everything is RGB now, RGB and VR ready. Besides the VR, so they have to combine those two for next year maybe. <laughs> RGB ready VR. So 2822, 2835. So really a close game. Both CPUs running around the 4,400 ish mark as said before. So how can they improve their performance well the only thing they can do is lower the cpu ratio and increase the reference clock by increasing the reference clock the memory is also linked at that one so you also get a small speed increase in memory frequency which might boost the xtu but xtu is like really stressing hard and it could be indeed like we've seen it before some are really scoring a little bit lower sometimes you rerun it and then the score is a little bit higher so First, you have to know what is my max. 2835 again. 2835. So, same match as uh, we saw in the extreme. Twice the same score, so that's pretty awesome. So, it's all down to maybe like getting. Yes, <laughs> 2866. Whoa. Oh, that's it. That's this, it. this is going now. This is pushing the scores. Uh, we can see that uh, some of the uh, th these amateur had some input on how to do the the tweaking. One of them was actually <laughs> DS was actually just removing the the explorer and killing it to gain a little bit extra points. Uh, but he had to run with the uh, the, the the wallpaper in it. So here we have uh, we have uh, LAN and DS both in the system trying to bench, but DS just crashed. DS simply just crashed the system. Yeah, this can happen sometimes if you raise the, the reference clock too many times that at a certain moment it just locks. So it's better to maybe set that value inside the BIOS, but they're not allowed to go into the BIOS, I think. So yeah, he he might have to set it like straight up to a Land higher value. 2847. So Land not, not giving in and uh, just trying to stay close Eight or minutes. high on, on the heels of DS. DS comfortably in the lead, let's say 2866, really high score for the frequencies and Land 2847. So needing 20 points more to, let's say, claim one one part of the game, but they still have to switch the setup. So uh, it could be that LAN also gets like a similar score than DS. Total score output will just be the two scores of each round added up to one another, truth, that's right. But there's, that's all there is to it. So we just have to wait for these 50 minutes. The opponents will get like maybe a minute break, switch setups, everything is reset to default again, and they can run again. So this match has 15 minutes. This is super, super tight because um, 15 minutes every time you restart, you lose at least 20 good, 20 good seconds, right? Uh, 
keep in mind that 15 minutes they have to dial in, test the CPU, get the best core, and go for it. And these guys are amateur. They they are not extreme overclockers. They they were here being trained uh, just this week for 30 minutes before they get on the stage. Yeah, and it's like you said, you you get a 30 minutes tutorial, and then you have playtime on the setups, and and. We have done stricter, let's say, uh, timings on on how many how much time they had to 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 learn the system. But because we were at Computex all week, uh, everybody could just drop in and, and just practice again. If there was like a setup free, feel free to practice and submit your score online. Thank you, Osil8, for the follow. Don't forget to follow here, uh, here us at Overclocking TV on Twitch. Uh, you can also follow the Intel channel on twitch.tv forward slash Intel. And they are actually rehosting us today for the final of the HW Bot World Series 2016. We are having two local guys, LAN and DS, competing today. There is six minutes left in this semi final. They will win some awesome prizes if they end up in the final and are winning there. Yeah, we're passing the six-minute mark now, so still same scores, 28-47, 28-66. Let's see if they can still improve. Temperatures are getting high now, 84, 85 degrees. So, yeah, the more, the higher the CPU speed, the higher the, the output will come. So, they have to watch it, in fact. But there's always this safety built in in, in these CPUs. So, it could be if they go over, let's say, 100 degrees, that you will see or observe on the screen the power limit or the current limit throttling so what will happen is that the cpu will just run a lower clock speed just to keep alive let's call it like that but there's normally no no real issue of course you can't run the same as running your car like that 150 miles per hour during 10 hours it will break down as well so this here they just need to be stable for the time of the benchmark they the benchmark it's just a few seconds. Uh, as long as you can do the workload correctly, this helps out on the score. Uh, this is really important that you get the right, uh, the best score to beat your opponent, and then you can move on to the next stage. Yeah, indeed, but it's like we said, if the, let's say your setup can let's say, survive or, or successfully complete this benchmark, you really have like a, a solid starting base for, for daily stability. It is really stressing hard, and it's stressing, in fact, really harder than, than gaming. You can easily see it on One the temperature output. Seconds. Four minutes, 50 seconds to go, says the head judge. Because usually you see like a 15 to 20 degree difference from, let's say, stress testing in XTU and maybe running like, uh, I don't know, Battlefield, Battlefield 4, the Battlefield 1 is coming up soon, I heard. But yeah, during gaming, I'm, I'm experiencing way low t lower temperatures than what we're seeing here right now. These benchmarks are stressing the CPU or the different component as much as they can. This is extremely important to test to the maximum so you know that if this is stable for the benchmark, it should be stable for the game. It just yeah. depends on how long you want to run it. Indeed, and the only thing that maybe could crash your game will be the GPU probably then. Because you d this is not tested. It's only the CPU, subsystem and the memory, which is really, really, really tested here in different like small steps. But the GPU is, of course, left out. So depending on, on if you also wanted to overclock your GPU, that's on, that's another story. So here we see Lan in the benchmark. He's rerunning the benchmark now. Um, the, 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 oh, let's wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, oh it just powered off. It just we're so off. expecting to get a yeah. blue screen. We were so expecting to get the blue screen for this amateur competition. Uh, Let's face it, you know, this uh, this amateur competition, we see a lot of blue screen because this uh, it is uh, not on extreme uh, overclocking, so they can be close to the edge, but still slightly correct. So it doesn't crash straight away. It kind of crash in some like remote background process or stuff like this. Usually what, what, what we get here with Broadwell E is if you like crash, it locks up. So the, the computer is like hard locked, so you really need to push down the, the power button for a few seconds till the setup switches off or even just flip the power switch at the at the back of the PSU. That's the only thing you can do if you really crash hard on these setups. But we might be a little yes, bit disappointed, Roof. 72. Oh, yeah. DS increasing its uh, elite with uh, another six points. 28-72 now. His final score. So Lan really needs to get his act together and, and try to remain close. Final score still is the sum or the addition of both scores that they will reach during the two times 15 minutes. So Lan already can start making calculations that he needs to have like a higher score than 28.72 on when he's benching the other setup. 
going to the V-Core and uh, yeah, why not push it a little bit more than 1.4 than what is advised. This is still a competition anyway. So we have seen with the, with the Pentium G3258, we, we saw like 1.6, 1.7 V-Core. You yeah, still remember that? That, in was, that, was, that was crazy. That um, was scary, in fact. Not even crazy, <laughs> just scary. <laughs> So what's Here the we go, left? 1 minute and 35 seconds left in this match. Uh, they, they both of these amateur overclockers are dialing in in the systems and trying to you know, reach out the best core index to you. Yeah, you just have to think like normally these CPUs run at like 1 volt, that's it. So you're pushing like over 40% extra voltage now. So I wouldn't recommend this for daily stability, but... During a competition, why not? You want to win prizes. You, there's like a really nice hardware for these guys. I think they get after the competition if they, depending if they make it to the final. Yes or no? So yeah, it's it's a game. There are a question from the live chat. What are we using the specs of the machine? They're all using the Zadak memory kit DDR4. They're using the Zadak 511. Uh, SSD as well. Everything is RGB. They're using X99 motherboard. One from Asus, one from MSI. Here we have the X99 Maximus 5 Extreme Edition 10 and the MSI X99 uh, Godlike Gaming Carbon. Carbon. Board. They all use the latest Intel Core i7 CPU, the 6950X, as well as the Seasonic PSU, the P7 760 watt power supply. There's 20 seconds left in this match. Um, let's see who can make it. 2847 and 2872 for DS. Yeah, so it's like we said, it's all, these are always like tight games. Seconds. So it's like we explained during the extreme, if he pushes start benchmark now, it's still we're still allowing it to complete the entire run. So the other one couldn't fire up the benchmark in due time. So it's no use. We just have to sit out this run. Then. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, two, one, thumbs up. Okay, one setup still running. Let's see the final score. From DS. Twenty-seven forty. So that's really, really, really way lower than what he expected. Uh, no improvement there, but yeah, still, uh, I'd say, home, a comfortable lead. In fact, over over land. So DS at the moment, like uh, in the comfort zone. But now they have to switch setups, and it could be that uh, one setup is, uh, yeah, performing maybe a little bit better on either CPU frequency, either cache. Maybe even the memory is just dialed in a little bit better on on the other vendor's board. Is something that that we are like experiencing daily daily basis as well there can be like slight performance differences between two different mainboard vendors all depending on how the bios engineers do their work at home you saw both competitors switch places they will get like a, a few minutes to like okay rethink what do i do again which voltages can i set which multiplier what happened what, what worked before what can i do now to maybe catch up to the other guy The next leg of this match will be 15 minutes again on the same benchmark. They just had to exchange uh, the side of the system and uh, they will be both still overclocking on XTU. We are seeing LAN against DS, two local overclockers that are amateur and that maybe didn't knew about overclocking the Broadwell CPU just a few days ago. Yeah, and I think um, many people maybe heard already about Broadwell E, but that to have the opportunity that you can even just use it play with it that's that that's insane so we really have to look at, to give credit to to intel for launching the cpu here and of course giving us the opportunity to to work with with these insane monsters these are like really power hoggers in, insane multi-threaded performance by these 10 core cpus here don't forget guys you can win one of these awesome prizes on our giveaway on our uh, overclocking dash tv dot com forward slash raffle you can win one of the zadak 511 mic z sata 3 2.5 ssd you can win one of the latest core i7 uh, cpu from intel the 6950x cpu this is a very 
very interesting price. Uh, you can get one of the P1050 power supplies from Seasonic, one of the Platinum uh, series. And you can get one of the unique Stricom BC1 open bench table unit. That is just a handful of units available in the world. This is not available to the market yet. This is a very, very early access. This is the only way you can uh, get one. Uh, let's give a big shout out to all of the partners of this event, the Cy Cyber Media, the Tetra Computex, uh, Zadak 511, Intel, AOCC, Sonic, Stricom, Tumul Grizzly, and all our friends from the media, Kulalo.com, that was taking care of the workshop here. Uh, Tom's Hardware, big shout out to you guys. Big shout out to OCN, Overclock.net, and Techmundo, and of course, OCSport.io and OCTV. This is uh, what you need to have as partner to make a successful event right here during the Computex. Indeed, it's all about uh, sponsorship and also have like community support. Like uh, we also have give uh, a good hand of applause to the guy from Coolala.com who did like all the the, the workshops with, with the, the local people. In fact, and we jumped in just in the afternoon for, let's see, let, let's call it maybe the visitors at Computex. So maybe the the, the non-locals who are talking English, the tutorial was done in, in, in English, making our lives a little bit easier. But yeah, big, big, big hands to the Coolala guys who... I don't know how, how, how many people did, did attend the workshop, if you have some numbers on that. I don't have the number uh, by heart, but we will check that out in the next break to uh, give that to, to you guys. Let us know where you are coming from on the live chat on Twitch before the next match starts. Well, uh, the max weight on the bench table, normally it's designed to be like transportable, so you can put it in your, inside your luggage and at the current they're using an aluminum version and it weighs around, let's say, completely assembled around 2.3 to 2.4 kilograms. So not that heavy. But let's tune into the second part of this match. The judge on the scene is Christian Ney. Christian, we are ready to go. Yeah, we're ready. So we start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good luck. Blah. And off for another 15 minutes, but now they switch setup. So it could be that uh, one, like, like I said before, one setup is just slightly dialed in better via the BIOS or the, the BIOS engineers did it. it a little bit better job than maybe the other brand and it could be that we see now LAN catching up to DS. DS now this time on the right hand side still fighting in the blue corner. 28-72 over 28-47. And going straight inside the internal extreme tuning utility like you see you have like a lot of variables that you can change and these guys are they did their homework they're not like really hesitating it's like I think they practice a lot just to to get it uh, sorted out and, and during the week they had to qualify so there was like a ranking made up and maybe they checked online what were the settings the other guy were using because as you can check on ocesport.io you can find some of the settings uh, that the guys are, are using for that um, you can see that uh, all the security safety features are still activated on this system so they could push as much as they can and there won't be any issue because um, people always ask oh can you burn your CPU, can you burn your graphic cards? No, you can't because there is safety in there. You can do overclocking, this is safe, as long as you keep on the safety and uh, you, you go you go with that. And that's why we sometimes have the, uh, the you're gonna say that, the, uh, the safety kicking in. Like the current limit throttling that we have right now or the power limit throttling. So League of, what is this um, power limit throttling we're seeing here uh, below on the bottom of the screen flashing red? Yeah, this is like you said. This is a built-in safety, in fact, by by the motherboard and, and and the CPU. So they're like talking to one another, communicating to one another, and then just avoiding the CPU. Like we've we've seen the the comment on on the Twitch. Uh, can we see some CPU meltdown? Uh, no. Th these are the safety measurements that kick in, and just will you see well, that the core frequency is also way lower. So I think he said like 4,400 megahertz, and it's only running at at 3.58 even way below four gigahertz. So indeed the the, the, the system itself protecting itself, it's self-protection in fact, before so anything what, go wrong. What is happening is that the power limit is when you draw too much power from the CPU. So this is like the amount of electricity that is withdrawn from the from the motherboard to, to sustain the, that CPU. There's a limit for that. And there's as well a limit about the current that you can have. So these two limits can kick in. Uh, do you also have a limit about the temperature, right? 
Yeah, it's the same. It, it depends a little bit on, on, on the, the type of process you use, but usually you're around, let's say, just keep it simple, 100 degrees. Once you go over 100 degrees, the CPU will just clock down like, like it does now, and it will not perform at its best. So, yeah, it, it's safety. It, it's a good thing that they built these things, and otherwise you could really, like create hardware failure like in a matter of minutes if you just wank the sliders all to the right yeah things can go wrong of course but it's good that these guys are really like exploring these, these this technology to to its maximum maybe not the, the the best usage because you're not getting the 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 frequencies that you want it to have So, and what's it? DS is at the moment, the board on the right hand side is on the MSI board. So, maybe it's a good thing that he, he does a reboot because he's always power limit throttling. Don't give too much information, they can hear us. I don't know if they can understand English directly or not because they are so focused in the competition. You never know. Sometimes, even for the extreme, we do the commentary and they just you know, forget to completely hear what's going on. Yeah, but it's, 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 like, it's like you're concentrating. It's like you're doing, I don't know, a race game or, or a first-person shooter or whatever it is. You're like into into the zone. You're there and you just want to perform at your best and, and you don't care. The only thing that might happen when you're on stage is like if the head judge announces another score, let's quickly verify where was I at before and, and, and where I'm at now with my setup. Uh, the thing is, I don't think that they know the total score. So if... One of the platforms gets a second second score. Yeah, we're 10 minutes and we haven't seen any score yet. So they're like really maxing out or trying the same settings out on the other platform. But yeah, sometimes it does not work. We'll yeah. see. And, and the final ranking between LAN and DS would be based on the total amount of score. So they, we, add, we add up the two score and that gives them their final score. <laughs> so our first score is coming in right now. 27-22. Right, head judge is verifying Land the score. 28.16. 28, 16 for land now. So we have to put that in and we will see a total output. Our secretary is a little bit slow today. Maybe didn't get enough sleep last night. Come on, Tim. So we have an idea about the total score. So 5,688 for DS. Let's see what Lan can, you can see if he can fight back. So you see that the, the score of DS is a little bit lower than on the previous setup. So here we have the total score, the total ranking for the guys. So Lan is 55.69 points, while DS is 56.88 points. That's still a, a quite a substantial difference. Uh, should be closer normally, but we still have got, what? Under almost nine minutes to Land go. So 28.66. Ah, now we're coming. 28.66. They should do it. They should be like super tight now. So wait there our secretary has done the input on the score and it will be like really, really tight. Tight as we want to see it. These, these systems are normally like properly matched. Should be really, really, really close. So here we have the, the two scores are the fir the first scores on the top is the one from the first round the second score is the one from the round actually running now and the big score is the total one the total score will define who will get to the final for the amateur lan is at 5713 points taking the lead against ds and there is 8 minutes and 20 seconds left in that game so this is why i said before like uh, one platform can yeah, perform a little bit better and we're seeing like the 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 the, the aces one at this moment is maybe a little bit better dial in or the cpu is just that tiny bit better can clock maybe 50 megahertz higher than the other one and then you get these slight differences but that's also it's a thing you have to be able to match or even surpass the score of your competitor on the same platform this is actually a nice way for you guys on the live uh, on the live here on twitch that to know what can this uh, cpu do in uh, in regular overclocking because we are not using liquid nitrogen right now we are just using a regular all-in-one uh, water cooling so this is the same setup you could have at home and these are the common overclock you could have as well uh, this is not just reading a frequency on a review on the internet but you can just see live exactly how they perform 
Yeah, and it's it's like we said, all these XTU scores can be just uploaded to 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 a website, and you can just compare the the performance of your setup versus the performance of of, of all the other submissions, and and it's really like a good maybe a good feedback to to see what 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 differences uh, memory speed and and stuff can do to your overall system speed. So five thousand seven hundred thirteen versus five thousand six hundred eighty-eight. At the moment, Lan saying is qualified for the final less than seven minutes to go you can see on the faces that both players are like really really focused and and not being bothered by by any comments that, that we're doing here right now it's just into the zone into the setup like thinking like what did the tutor tell me again last last week what, 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 how could i improve this one but i feel really these these guys are like they did their homework truth they definitely did their homework they know where they want to go and uh, and get into the settings it's interesting to see that ds is actually just using the basic tuning not even using the uh, the, uh, the detail advanced one yeah if it's enough it's enough now nah. uh, you just have to get the right tool to do the right job indeed and it's like we said everything is in this X intel extreme tuning utility which is free downloadable for the intel side of course because if I mention Intel, you know that it does not work on the other vendor. Line 2872. Oh, so improving by a good amount of points, by 15 points, is his previous score. He will still get in the lead. He is in the lead now. There is six minutes left in this uh, second leg of this first semi-final for the amateur. Yeah, in fact, it's like nice to see that he matches, in fact, exact the same score the same performance as ds did previously on 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 the aces setup so it's really up to ds now to to match the score of lan on the msi platform what the guys can do is to start running again the system they want to make sure that uh, you know you can get the best score as we say usually when you run xu three times you get a better score the third time uh we see that sometimes it happens but it's not 100 percent of the case no it, it just depends you see as well that the core frequency is like a little bit balancing Five it's minutes. not like rock steady and ah it locked up Both competitors really trying hard to improve their score. DS really needs to, to, to catch up now. He really needs to match at least 2847. What happens in fact too when there's like a tie? What what happens? We'll have to wait for the judge to decide that. Okay. It's a job that uh, yeah, I'm not really willing to do if there's like a tie. So will he do like <laughs> I've got no clue how he will figure it out maybe do like a golden score then every every competitor has five, like... five minutes extra maybe but that's the judge that will be deciding uh, exactly how it goes after uh, if that tie right because it it never happened it only happened once in all the edge of quad series and it happened with the extreme guys so the extreme guys can just run five minutes more and that's the golden score that will be out of these five minutes but otherwise, for the uh, for the amateur, of all the amateur and all the matches we did this year, these tie never happened yet. Yeah, Diaz really needs to make up for the 31 points that he's missing at this moment. So, both guys again in the operating system, tweaking, dialing it in, and hopefully complete another successful run. That was actually a comment on the live chat from Cax Viper. You have to be good to understand everything, how everything works and how you can dial dial in, in the settings and tweaks. Uh, that will give you, even if you don't know that, you will have a good score, but not the best score. Yeah, and it, it, it's easy. Maybe you can link the, the people on Twitch again, Truth, to your uh, Slacker Bencher, or Scatter Bencher videos. I'm always mixing that one up. To, like, it's really a brief tutorial on how is your processor speed built up? How can you adjust it? And then, it's, it's almost the same on, on, on every setup. It's always, of course, good that you get like maybe a little bit of hand. And, and that's what we always advise people. Just just join a forum or something like OC.net and, and stuff like that. They're really good. And, and they have like really good tutorials, overclocking guides as well on their website. And, you, the, the, and the people just, the community is there. They want to help you. They want to, to, to help you tweak your, your CPU. And it's not only about extreme stuff. It's just even for daily daily usage. That's the thing. So the extreme guys that we saw earlier today are the one pushing it to the edge. They are the one working with the manufacturers to to get to the hardware that you have today, except for the LED part. For, but for the rock stability uh, part, that have been no 10, 15 years of underground work with the overclockers. 
We are 2 minutes 30 seconds in the uh, left in this game. We'll see if uh, DS can catch up on LAN and uh, make sure that everything can go perfectly with them and access the final. So LAN going again for another run. DS still adjusting. He's the one that needs to find, like, how can I beat my opponent here on the right hand side? But he's only like. 4 gigahertz at uh, 4.4 now. Tuning utility was a little bit slow to catch up. 4.4 on the core and the cache frequency, so in fact, which links the CPU cores to the memory, is at 3610 megahertz. So the guys here are trying to reach the best scores possible in XTU. This is a benchmark uh, provided by Intel, free of charge for everyone. You can download that one on download.intel.com. And they're trying to reach the highest score they can. Whoa. And 28, 78. That's, so that's, uh, finally, he managed to beat the score of DS he did previously on the same platform. So he definitely have an edge here that's going to be extremely difficult for DS to catch up in the last uh, minute and 15 seconds uh, for his stat score. Yeah, indeed, it's like you said, uh, even with, with, with the solid state drives, rebooting your setup takes some time. And, and... I I'm, I'm really wonder why these guys, maybe they forgot to teach them that like there's you can save these profiles. Well, if you have like a, like a like a working a working stable run, like oh yeah, save the profile and maybe when you just enter XTU, run run the profile again, load it up and, and just maybe do a small adjustment to get maybe a little bit 29. better performance. The guys have to reach the best core in XTU. This means they have to have the fastest computer here on the stage. And the winner of this one will go to the final of the amateur to, gain, to win some awesome prizes. And indeed, you say the fastest platform on the stage. Indeed, these 10 core CPUs are like really impressive, really, really impressive impressive really crushes i think the guys that do folding at home and all that rendering shit and stuff like insane insane cpus really nice technology that we're able to play with in 2016. so the final seconds 5725 for lan and the sir yeah it's coming close 5701 final seconds ticking away Time's up. Time's up. So no improvement in scores. This is it. So Lan just nailing it. 5,725 versus 5,701. Job well done, man. Congrats. Able to yeah to set both high scores on on. So a true winner here. Congratulations to the two overclockers. These guys are amateur. These guys were just like you guys watching us on. The, uh, here on Twitch, uh, they were they didn't knew about Broadwell E just uh, before Tuesday because this new CPU from Intel was just launched four days ago. This is the first time these people had experience with it. Um, there was a question on live chat, so why are we doing this? We just do that to gain more performances, and what we did is we did that for the fun, and now we're doing that as a competitive sport. Yeah, true. It's like it's like with everything. You just have your scooter, and you want to pick up your girlfriend a little bit faster. Yeah, you just tweak the engine, put down another exhaust, maybe another piston liner, and yeah, crank up the speed. Why? Because you can. Because you, you can. can. Yeah, and because you can keep pushing it. Talking about keep pushing it, can you show the superb, awesome T-shirt that you have? Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you guys can get this T-shirt on the Twitch store. You can just go on twitch.tv forward slash overclocking TV. And below the player, you will have the link to uh, access the shop for this one. Uh, we have different colors, the red, navy blue, uh, blue screen blue, and uh, and the uh, special gray one. Uh, there is also the cut for the girls and the hoodie coming on uh, as well on this Twitch store. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for uh, watching this first match. We will take a short break and get to the second semi-final of this HWBot World Tour and at the HWBot World Series for Amateur. We will see Xia Liao against Jimmy Lin. They will be fighting again on XTU. The same concept, 15 minutes, then change the platform for 15 minutes. My dear League of, let's take a short break and we find you back right after.